Are you feeling tired and worn out and lacking motivation? And maybe even finding yourself flaring up easily, less patient than usual, and maybe even worse, sleepless nights, and waking up just feeling pangs of anxiety for no apparent reason. Well, if your answer is yes, you're not alone. Unfortunately, there's a growing concern with what we're all going through nowadays. These symptoms are symptoms, rather, of overwhelm. And overwhelm, if it's not checked, if it's not managed, can lead to what? You know this, burnout. All too common in many professions, even for people who love what they do, or on purpose, feel a mission. It's a sneaky thing that happens to us. I say that because it's not the big events that get us. It's those day in and day out demands on our life that build and build with that. It's probably one of the primary reasons why people don't get what they want, are not co-creating or manifesting what they want, why relationships break up prematurely, businesses fail. You know, they say the biggest reason why relationships fail is arguing over money, finances. Well, the big reason why people struggle with their finances and don't scale up their business, don't get ahead, is because they're what? Living in survival. It's also a reason why often people, even people who do the work, are getting sick needlessly because they're living in survival, meaning high stress mode. Neurologically, biologically, that simply means when that happens to us, our body has been flooded with stress hormones, cortisol, and there's a whole range of names for that. And we can only take so much. So yes, you are very adaptable. As human beings, we're very adaptable. And yet we can only take so much that eventually it builds up and catches up with us. So the leading research shows that it leads to what? Low performance, not just sleepless nights, high anxiety. It can lead to feeling helpless and hopeless, even to depression. And perhaps you know this, you realize this, and I don't mean to belabor it, but it's really an important thing for us all to be mindful of. So let's take a look at some of the causes, what contributes to this problem, and what can you do about it? And it is manageable with the right training and practice. So listen close, because this may be for you if you've answered yes to that question earlier about feeling tired, overwhelmed, high stressed, etc. If you have, don't know who I am, my name is Ken Kasha. Perhaps you've been studying my work, perhaps you're new to following me and my work. I've been doing this work since 1971 for the Silver Method. I'm the lead instructor, the training director. Silver Method's the most experienced instructor globally. We're in over 110 different nations. Millions and millions of people have been through this training. And I've had the opportunity to work with hundreds of thousands directly and many, many, many more, hundreds of thousands more, because as the lead instructor and training director, I'm interacting with our team of instructors globally, as I have been for many decades. It's an honor, it's a privilege. And I tell you this because we've identified and made this our passion. It's part of our program, what we now call the immersion of civil life and intuition system, helping people navigate life with grace, with ease, more in flow, helping people to take command of their lives. And it's an inside game. So please listen close and follow these simple directions. This is meant to be a fairly short training video that when you follow these directions, I think you'd be very pleased and you'll find that it will work for you. Be patient. It's not a quick fix with that. So some of the causes. First, it begins with self-awareness being mindfully present and aware of what's triggering us. What are the triggers in your life, in my life? What are the challenges we all face that have been conditioned in us for decades and decades since we were little ones to now the present? And if you're interested in taking command, it's an inside game. It has to be done from within. We need to do the inner work. And when you do the inner work, that's what makes it lasting. With a bit of repetition, you can create a new pattern of behavior, a new neural pattern, and it becomes lasting for you. So we want to go beyond just motivation. Motivation's great. I like to be motivated. 
But unless something shifts inside, unless we transform our energy, eh, then we slip back into old patterns. Can you relate? So self-awareness begins with recognizing, like I said, some of the traits, and there's a lot of causes. I'm going to do my best to simplify this and just look at some of the causes that I resonate with and I'd like to pass on to you because I'm with you too. I've had my opportunities, my time of being overwhelmed, stressed out, of being in what I call the duh moment, like where do I start? And and, and I can't even say it. It's, it it's, it's not a fun experience. I'm blessed and fortunate that at an early age of 19, Back in 71, I learned these tools in the Silver Method and I've been practicing them and teaching them since then full time. And it's, it's been a game changer. I don't know how people do without tools like this for that. So let's take a look at what I mean by that. First step with the self-awareness. It's important that we maintain our emotional integrity. Simply meaning that we honor who we are, what we're feeling, respect ourselves, love ourselves, and prioritize self-care and self-compassion. You heard me right. So important because it's those little things day in and day out. For example, those stressors and what causes it. Some of the contributors are, have you ever felt disrespected by someone you care about? Your spouse, friends, co-workers, your boss, clients? Have you ever been betrayed or found that people talk down to you? They're condescending? These are known triggers. These are known things that cause us to get it stressed out and go into survival mode and get defensive. Have you worked with people or maybe had a manager or who knows? It could be a good friend who says, you're always late. You're never this. You're never that. Well, it might be correct that you've frequently been late, but there's got to be some times when you weren't. Nobody wants to hear that. And if people are talking to you like that, that's going to be a trigger. That's going to cause us to go into defensive mode and then nothing happens. The shields go up, so to, so to speak, with that. Those little things, it's like this seltzer bottle. Sparkling water. Put it in water over ice, add your favorite addition, and it's delicious. But I liken it to this. I'll use this as a metaphor. Because at work, if you work for someone, you may not want to speak your mind or tell the truth how you feel because you don't want to lose your job. Correct? Can you relate? So we repress it. That's the key. It's important that you and I stop repressing our feelings. We need to be more transparent and find a way to express ourselves positively, professionally, compassionately. Then we don't want to hurt our friends' feelings and we don't tell them the truth. And then they keep making the same mistake and they keep doing caught up in behavior that doesn't get them where they want to go because no one's been courageous enough, honest enough to tell them the truth. So we repress those feelings. And then, you know, life happens. People say, oh, suck it up. It's those little things. People, when you're driving, cut you off, are, are disrespectful, or driving crazily with high, you know, the, the negligent drivers there, they're, again, can't even say it, and we're kind of forced. And then if you happen to turn on the news and you see what's going on on the planet, a lot of this stuff is beyond your control, my control as individuals. But yet we find ourselves, when we're not maintaining our emotional integrity, repressing that, internalizing that, you get the idea, and we start holding in. Some of you are working for someone or in a situation where you're being told to do something that you know is wrong. And that's a major stressor because you'll start to feel what? Guilt. And as a result, if your values, your goals rather, your aspirations are not in alignment with your values, it's more of this. I mean, I could go on and on, but you get the idea, my friends? It's, 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 it's no piece of cake, and I, I don't mean to imply that it's easy, but it can be handled when you take the time and you get the training and you know what to do and you apply it. So when people lose their temper, 
when people flare up for no apparent reason. Can you relate? Have you ever? Or you know someone who has? That's because they've been repressing and repressing. And then we call it a trigger. It's like a switch. And then all of a sudden, and I'm not going to open it because I don't want to mess up my video here. But can you hear that? And if I really opened it up, it's like somebody thinks they're funny. They do this with, with a can of beer or something or soda or bottle of beer and they shake it. You don't know. And then you open it. It's like an explosion all over. And human beings are much the same way. It's one of the symptoms of somebody who has been out of emotional integrity, repressing their feelings. And you got to be courageous. If you know me and you've heard me, you've heard me say, I jokingly say I have a big mouth. I'm very transparent. It's one of the things I'm told people like about me and like studying with me because I tell the truth. I don't exaggerate. I don't say, rip, oh, yeah, you can do, you know, empty, you know, platitudes. And even with people working, although I'm an independent, it's my own business as a silver instructor, I do, I am responsible to the leadership and I don't always agree. I mean, nobody agrees all the time. But I've learned when I was younger, I'd be quiet. But then I'd ruminate on it and I'd feel bad about it. I should have done this and I should have said that. And I stopped beating myself up emotionally because I didn't speak up or I'm at a meeting and there were people, you know how some people are, they're always controlling and they, and they always speak up. They're very aggressive. In situations like that, I used to find I'd clam up and then I'd walk away and feel bad because I didn't express my opinion or my insight or my wisdom. And it wasn't good for my, my self-esteem. And then I learned the lesson and I began to, again, professionally, honestly, nicely, and run the risk that I may not be so popular. I may be frowned upon. To this day, even still, those of you who know me, it happens. Because I know what I know. And this is what I've been doing for nearly 53 years. And I consult with leaders and business leaders and people get lots of training. And I consult with people who run multi-million dollar seminar companies and understand about branding and stuff. So I'm not just expressing opinions, they're educated opinions. But again, I can't control everything. So what I'm saying to you, my friends, is you can do this too. Just like I have learned to speak my mind, express, and then at least I can sleep at night and say, hey, I did my best. Now it's on them. And I'll just take care of my, on my end, my business. That's a way to maintain your emotional ex expressivity or your emotional integrity. But another thing too, aspect is, We've got to be very careful not to set unrealistic deadlines for ourselves. Sometimes people who we answer to, you know, work with or for, some clients are overly demanding and they're looking for quick fix. It's fascinating to me. I say this lovingly with compassion, but I'm going to be transparent. How many people put on a video and they listen for five seconds, 10 seconds? I'm told from sources, very reliable sources, that about 50% or more of people who are buying online training don't even finish it. Actually, it's much more than that. It's close to 90%. It's about 50% who don't even open it up and get started. And it's fascinating how many people, because they're looking for a quick fix. It's fascinating to me how many people will send me an email asking a question. Now, for example, we had a program, The Roadmap to Creating a Better World. And I sent out to everybody who registered the link, you know, the Zoom link. And somebody sent an email and said, how do I access this? I want to be there with you live. In the very email, she replied to the email I sent, and there it was, the Zoom link. <laughs> and I know we've all been there. Stuff like this happens. What it's indicative of me, though, is a sense of impatience. And when you're stressed out, overwhelmed, that happens. It's like it blinds us. We don't even see what's actually there. Can you relate? It's nearly impossible to be at your best if you're living in survival and you're stressed and you're in desperation mode because you're more likely to make mistakes. You're more likely to make silly mistakes. You're more likely to have an accident. You're more likely to weaken your immune system and get sick needlessly because there's germs and bacteria around all over the place. But we have a body that protects us, an immune system. So it's important to stay centered, to stay balanced. And you can do that by daily meditation, whether it be silver meditation or otherwise. 
13 minutes is key, minimum 13 minutes. You can do much more if you want, but that's how you can maximize the benefits. Another way to do this is you want to own your morning and own your day. What do I mean by that? Some people wake up first thing, they turn on the news, a cup of coffee. They didn't even put food in their body. They haven't even taken a glass of water. That's not owning your morning. Because now why? In the morning, you're coming out of this state, a sleep-like state. You're coming, coming out of the lower brainwave function that's been called alpha and theta, and you're highly suggestible. You learn faster. It is fact a super learning state. And even though your eyes are open, it lasts for up to about 30 minutes, maybe a little bit longer. So you're highly impressionable. Last thing you want to do is be getting all this what's wrong in the world input. Pay attention to what's going on, absolutely. And start asking, not ruminate on it, not live in it and wallow in it. What can we do about it? What can I do for me, for my family with that? So maybe read some inspirational messages, read some poetry you like, do some meditation, hug a friend, something in the morning that's or read a really good book for your personal growth. I think it's also important that you and I prioritize personal development, prioritize our growth, because when we're growing, we learn how to navigate life more effectively. We learn how to gain more mastery of our life on any level. So it begins with self-awareness and then repetition, App excuse me, application, implementation, and repetition to make that neural pattern. So. These unrealistic deadlines. We expect too much of it. I should have done this. I should have done that. So here's, perhaps you've heard me say this before. It's huge and it's a game changer. Start giving yourself permission. Be compassionate. Practice some self-compassion and recognize you're not perfect and you're bound. Everybody makes mistakes. That doesn't mean, okay, I'm making mistakes. Who cares? No, of course not. <laughs> I'm being silly, right? No. I have a silly sense of humor, people tell. But you recognize, hey, own up to it. I made a mistake. Yeah, I made a huge, oh dear, I made a big mistake. I give myself permission not to be perfect. I forgive myself. Now, what can I learn from this? How can I turn it around? How can I do it better? See the difference? Because if you ruminate on it and wallow on it, whatever you give attention to, you give energy to. And whatever you give energy to will magnify. And that's what happens to people when they go to sleep. They ruminate on, I should have done this, I should have done that. And they're what? Mentally rehearsing what they don't want. Fact, when you mentally rehearse, you can improve the quality of your life in any aspect. And when you mentally rehearse, create a visualization in a relaxed, quiet state, an alpha-theta state, like you learn in silver or other court meditation programs, that's the key that will make the change, help you to fire and wire your brain to create a new neural pattern. And then you got to get some repetition in there. So recognize situations. So let me teach you a, 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 a metaphor. I learned this from a good friend of mine, John Falito, who is my coach. I coach him sometimes. We, one time he was the coach to the coaches in the silver organization amongst our instructors. And he calls it, you got to awe before you roar. Some people are very aggressive and assertive. Or, you know, the time, oh, I know he's roaring. Some people are celebrating their success without having the resources to build on that success. Some people are expecting too much too soon without planning, strategizing, and having the tools and the resources needed. That's roaring prematurely. <laughs> you get the idea? So awe, it's an, an acronym, O-A-R. O, observe, A, assess, and the R, respond. So here's a simple framework in any life situation, professional, personal. When you can step back, I know this is challenging. It can be done, though. Step back and more objectively observe what's going on as if you were a true journalist, reporter, just reporting what you're observing, what you're seeing, what you're experiencing. And in order to do that, it's important to embrace the idiosyncrasies of people and recognize we can't change people. It would be nice. <laughs> I can think of that. If you were ever in a relationship with another and you're raising a child, there are a lot of people, single moms, single dads, and their relationship is not so positive or harmonious. Some of them were never married. You know, they were 
together for a short period of time and produced a beautiful, wonderful human being, but they're always fighting, arguing. And sometimes if you're on the other end of that and you're being honorable, you're telling the truth and you're putting your child's best interest first and the other person, I've coached some people with this, who are narcissistic, self-absorbed, and it's always about them, not even the well-being of the child. And they will do things just to piss off the father, the mother, you know, the, the other partner, because they don't like them. There's so much anger and hate. And they'll make up stories. It's horrible. I've lived through it, not in my personal life with this. It's horrible, no question. And that's challenging. But when we can observe that this is who he is or who she is, now what can I do about it? And recognize them. Stop trying to change them. Stop getting angry and upset because they're maybe never going to change unless they take some steps, some action, correct? So it's important to recognize that. That's what I mean by embrace their idiosyncrasies. And maybe it's unacceptable behavior. We want nothing to do with them. But when we can observe and then assess, now what's going on? What's really going on behind here? And you assess the situation and what's in the best interest of my child? What's in the best interest of my client, my business? What's in the best interest of my health? And you assess that. And with that level of assessment, then you develop a plan, a strategy. Again, being as objective as you can. So the O, observe. The A, assess. And then the R, respond. Not react. <clears throat> you know, they need jerk. And if you can just practice that and just stop before you jump and scream and holler, get upset and write a nasty email. <laughs> Have you ever done that and you wish you hadn't? <sighs> observe what's going on and assess. It'll calm you down. It'll help you to respond more graciously, more positive. Again, not put up with the baloney. Not put up with this stuff. You know, be there, be present, observe it. But not become reactive where you lower yourself to name calling or getting upset. And, and then it just gets worse. And then it becomes, you know, it takes one to love, but it takes two to argue and fight. Simple framework that can make a big, big difference with respect. So again, self-awareness, acknowledging the struggle, acknowledging that life isn't easy. And nowhere is it written that life should be fair. I learned that many years ago, studying psychology, which has been a big part of my life, studying that, that I wish it were, but sometimes it just isn't fair. Look around with that. That doesn't mean we accept that. That's part of why I do this work, in the hopes of raising the bar in people's lives, in the hopes of teaching people the tools and techniques of the silver method so that they can take command of their lives and not be victimized by the junk out there but, and really hold their own and navigate with more grace, more ease, and more inflow. And if you've studied with me and you've been through the immersion of silver life and intuition system, that has been your experience, has it not? As long as you practice and you implement and you do this every day, it's important to stay centered, to stay balanced. Another tool. I said you want to prioritize self-care and self-compassion. I find that sometimes if I'm kind of in a funk or low energy, not feeling so motivated, I admit in these past few years, I've really doubled down to be of service to you guys and offer more support. I offer tons of support, maybe more than most that I know, not just during the training, but after and it takes a lot. And I found myself, it was exacerbating some injuries that I had sustained a while ago. And I required treatment. Right? I had to prioritize my self-care to get back in balance, structurally speaking. But also it affected my thinking and my energy level. So I had to recognize, I say, hey, yeah, if you're on a mission and you want to help people and you want to do the job and you want to be more effective and perform more effectively, the key is to not get stressed out, not go into survival mode, because if you do, then you're more likely to get debilitated and you'll lose even more time, days, weeks, or more, and you certainly won't be at your best. So think long-term. Think long-term. Because I'm so busy, I'm so busy. Who's got time? Sleep seven minimum hours a day to nine. I'm so busy. I got People are going to bed later and early because they're working. So Yeah, that doesn't 
you, you built up a sleep deficit and you can only handle so much. Again, it's like this and eventually there'll be that flare up and that costs you more time, more money with that. Another aspect uh, that you can do for your self-care and self-compassion. What's your favorite music, your favorite playlist? And go for a walk, great way. Every day, walk 20, 30 minutes. You don't have to do anything fancy schmancy, just a walk. It's a known antidote for releasing the stress. And it's like a meditation. It's a walking meditation, depending where you're walking. And you get, you get, I get, when I do this, I do this every day. I get more ideas. I practice preparing for this video. I practice you know, my presentations and stuff. But put your earbuds on, listen to your favorite music to set a mood. And it brings you right up. I have music on. I put my favorite playlist in our home. My home is, my office is in my home. In the car when I'm traveling somewhere. Man, it sets a stage and I find myself, and dance. Hey, no one's around, dance. Enjoy it, and all your crazy weird moves. I don't know that I have good moves to kind of, but they're my moves. Who cares what people say, things, especially if your own doesn't matter. But when you do that, it frees us up. Dancing, going back for eons has always been tra a, a tradition that helps community building that helps people to relax and release for that. So in the morning, watch, own your morning. No social media also first thing in the morning and no social media at night before you go to bed. Be careful of that because whatever you give attention to, you give energy to, whatever you give energy to will grow. And at night before you go to bed, you're dipping into these states and the inner conscious, so-called subconscious will what? Integrate the dominant thoughts. Same thing in the morning, the impression. So your favorite place, you get the idea, I mean, I could go on, I won't, I've gone longer than I wanted. If you're still here with me, that says a lot about you. That, and I thank you for honoring me with your presence and watching. And I'm sure there've been so many who stopped the video long ago with that. And that's okay. I'm at peace with that because I know this stuff works. I know there's great value with it. And it's up to you, each of us, to find out based on your own experience. So I hope one day to meet you, to shake your hand. It'd be my honor to be your silver instructor. I love doing this work. I thank God every day that I found this so early in my life. When I started, I was in school struggling at Boston University, flunking out. I had no direction. I was more interested in partying. And I was just going through the paces because, you know, you had to get an education and work. And thanks to a friend, after two years of that, I was introduced to the silver method. I went through the class and I never looked back. I went back to school, used the tools. I graduated the highest honors, cum laude, by using the accelerated learning three fingers technique we teach in silver method. I was suffering from headaches constantly, chronically, and I was able to control them with the silver technique and eventually I stopped getting the headaches. I turned my mom, well, I didn't turn her on because she was really upset that I was doing this at first until she saw the changes. I used to have anger issues and she noticed changes in my personality. I became a bit more calm, more relaxed. You know, it seemed like I, I, it was just what she told me. She took the class. My mom used to suffer from asthma, chronic asthma attacks stopped having them. Every day she did what we call the long relax. It's a 30 minute meditation. I made it recording for her, my voice. She had debilitating arthritis all my years as a kid growing up. And her body healed, recovered. I can't make this stuff up. And I've witnessed thousands and thousands of people have miraculous turnarounds, so-called miraculous, because your body is your, you are the placebo. And our thoughts influence, our emotions influence our physiology. So my friends, if you keep doing what you've been doing, you're gonna keep getting the same results. It's time to take action. It's time to do something different. Again, thanks for watching. Remember, when you practice, when you use the skills or whatever you've learned, you've got this. You are far better, far stronger, and frankly, you have everything you need within you. We all have incredible human potential. It's just a matter of learning how to harness it and put it to use and stop sabotaging ourselves. Thank you.